Well, that uh, Buckingham Palace where we are, in about an hour the focus will shift from here at Buckingham Palace to St. Paul's Cathedral, to the altar specifically of St. Paul's Cathedral where the Archbishop of Canterbury the, will marry Prince Charles and his bride. Standing there too will be the man who is responsible for the cathedral. He is the Dean of St. Paul's, the very, rever the very Reverend Alan Webster, and he talked with NBC's Diane Wilder. St. Paul's Cathedral, the very Reverend Alan Webster. He's been involved in the planning of every detail of the wedding ceremony, and by now knows the royal couple well. The bride and bridegroom, really, we really... ...and directed aright, that those who are called of God to this holy estate should continue therein in pureness of living. Thirdly, it was ordained for the mutual society, help and comfort that the one ought to have of the other, both in prosperity and in adversity. Into which holy estate these two persons present come now to be joined. Therefore, if any man can show any just cause why they may not lawfully be joined together, let him now speak or else hereafter forever hold his peace. <clears throat> the Archbishop of Canterbury, Robert I Wensley. require and charge you both. Yes, well, obviously we've now got a new star in the royal firmament, and uh, I'm sure we're going to see a most enormous reception for her when she gets out of the season. A royal family in need of a star? Well, perhaps so, a little glamour, which is certainly brought to the family. But now Queen Elizabeth, who is there, as you can see in the lower right-hand corner of your screen, these are the bridesmaids. Queen Elizabeth likes the attention, I'm told, centered on her alone, or certainly she likes to be in the spotlight. You think that there's a possibility of some friction? We're not trying to stir something up here on this glorious and festive day, obviously. But they live so much in the limelight, all of these people. Could put some strain on the family, couldn't it? It could, it could, we shall see. I think it'll put more strain on Princess Anne, who has never been well liked by the public at all, and she must feel a little bit sour at the uh, gorgeousness of Lady Diana, or the princess as she now is. Am I reading too much into this, or does Prince Charles look absolutely relieved to all of you as well? <laughs> well, you know, I'm waiting for him to stop and gaze in his bride's face. Now, they've been in private together signing the register, and maybe he did all of that, but I want him to turn and and be dazzled by her. That's, of course, the romantic side of me. Good. Well, if he won't, I will be. She is really a stunning-looking 20-year-old woman. Now listen to the crowds as they emerge from St. Paul's Cathedral. an exceptional scene. It has been an extraordinary morning, and yet there is about it an anachronistic quality. This country, so troubled by economic and political difficulties, now pulls itself together on this one national holiday to remind us of its glorious past, to present to us, as no other country that I know of in the world can, the pageantry, the color, the magnificence of it all. These two young people, he without real duties in life except to play the part of Prince of Wales, heir to the throne of England, a constitutional monarch. Can't start a war, can't end unemployment. But he can stand for all sorts of uh, basic human qualities which are clearly moving everybody today. And, and the Archbishop Brunsey talked about that. In a speech in which he emphasized the family themes, he said, marriage requires a private faith and a public importance. We can solve all of our economic problems, he said, and if we fail to build our families, we will profit as nothing. They were married, too, in a, what is called a people's church. St. Paul's is, uh, is, despite how grand it is, it serves the purpose of a simple parish church. And, 
in a rather liberal way. Tina Brown, Queen Elizabeth doesn't smile much. I mean, there she is, the mother of the bride, groom, and uh, she now has something accomplished that she wanted to for some time. She is very solemn, unlike the Queen Mother, who grins and grins and grins, but she may have been overwhelmed with emotion. It's for her a very, very moving moment. At last, Prince, of Charles, Prince Charles has put her out of her misery and anticipation, and she's going to get an, an heir from him. I guess when you are the uh, Prince of Wales and you're in your Navy commander's uniform and you're being pulled by four white horses in a state land, uh, you cannot put your arm around the bride. Is that, is that part of the rule? I mean, uh, everything is quite formal here. There is not anything that's given over to informality. But isn't that the natural inclination you'd reach over where you've married this beautiful young woman? Really? I think so, but uh, this royal family, I've are bred from the moment they are born, the moment they see their first photographer's camera to uh, suppress their emotions and to put on a public face. It must be very difficult for him to experience this as a personal occasion rather than just as another public one. St. Paul's Cathedral, now about an hour and a half ago, by rough calculation. The crowds who line the procession of the royal ceremony and the royal procession have gathered here now in front of Buckingham Palace. It's hard to know just how many of them all together, more than a half million by some estimates, up to a million by others. The curtains are open, that's the signal. It'll be in, I guess, a matter of minutes, if not in a matter of seconds, but that is the traditional signal. Here they come. The Prince of Wales, his bride, the Princess of Wales, Diana Spencer. sometimes, well, a moment of difficulty that can exist between two families <laughs> on this kind of an occasion, that's right, the in-laws. So Lady Diana, of course, was born on the royal estate and grew up, we are told, calling the queen auntie. It's the first time that we have seen them on television, at least, kind of exchanging, knowing, loving looks. Speaking of uh, mothers-in-law, Tom, Prince Charles' great-great-grandfather Bertie was quoted as saying once, I don't mind praying to the eternal father, but I must be the only man in the country afflicted with the eternal mother. Yes. His mother was Queen Victoria, of course. Prince Charles, Princess, the Princess of Wales, one day may be the king and queen of this country. He is the heir to the throne, and if they have a son, he would be in line of succession. If right, they Robert? have a daughter, would she? Would she be the heir presumptive? Uh, she would be the heir presumptive until a son was born, who would then become the heir apparent. There's the queen mother, who, of course, is such a popular figure. 
She had a small accident before the wedding. She barked her shin at an outing, and there was some great concern every day on the front pages of the paper, Tina Brown, about whether or not she would appear there. I think nothing would have kept the Queen Mother away. I think she would have had to have had both legs broken to have stayed away from this wedding. <laughs> They do have other business to attend to. No, so. they'll be back. There will be curtain calls. <laughs> well, he doesn't want to leave, you see. <laughs> <laughs> there will be curtain calls, I'm sure. Though I don't have a direct line to Buckingham Palace. I could be wrong. This balcony, of course, is historic. It is on this balcony that the royal family have appeared at the end of two world wars to receive ovations like this. We last saw this four years ago during the Silver Jubilee when Queen Elizabeth appeared with her son. It's been a difficult day for many of these spectators. They have been standing here for hours and uh, the weather is not oppressive, but it's, but it's warm and a, a couple of women were seen having fainted and parted off and there was some speculation up here that they might have been former girlfriends. Well, I think that was your idea. Already. That was a lot of speculation, but... <laughs> They're part of the ladies in waiting and waiting and waiting. <laughs> of which I was one for years. You were a great admirer of Prince Charles. I mean, you were kind of, in a, in the best possible way, a kind of Prince Charles fan when you were growing up. Sure, I thought he was good looking even when he really wasn't. <laughs> He's a sort of jolly laid now, isn't he, with his scar and his slightly sort of uh, rakish look he's developing. All that will have to end, I suppose. I think it's att attractive to uh, a man, you call him the action man, and, and partially because, well, here they come. Is that Clementine Ambro she's holding by the hand? Looks like it, yes, she's her favorite bridesmaid. She was a student of hers at the kindergarten. That's right. direct descendant of Winston Churchill. Yeah, she's got everything going for her, has Clementine Hamber. Now, what member of the royal family might she be paired with 20 years from now? Maybe Mr. Edward Van Cutsum, ah. the other royal page. It's interesting to me, and I keep coming back to the uh, reality of what is going to be the future of this country as well, about the role that he may take in that, Robert Lacey. Um, he obviously cannot take a political or partisan position, but it does seem... So they have returned once again to the interior of Buckingham Palace. The crowd will remain fixed in place until the royal couple leaves for its honeymoon trip or until it appears once again in the balcony. Now they're now closing the doors and they'll be dropping the curtain shortly because they have to get on with what they call a wedding breakfast here. Actually, the tradition began, I think, with Queen Victoria who changed the time of royal weddings from the evening until the morning. She was the first to do that. So now they gather for a little luncheon of immediate family and very close friends. Of all the invitations of the past week or so, 
Wouldn't you say this is the most coveted of them all? Tina? Yes, it is, but I think it really is immediate family. It would be the bride's father, stepmother, sisters, cousins. Um, Wasn't the there a couple of the girlfriends were attending, though? I, I think I the flatmates got to that. They missed out on being bridesmaids, but I think they're at the reception. Yeah. Well, no, there was one talk that uh, the Sheffield and Guinness, who had been uh, seen with the prince from time to time, were there as well. We'll have more coverage, of course, of this very festive day of the royal marriage of His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales. What do we have going on? I have to check every roar of the crowd to make sure that we can go away. I think we can safely. We'll be back right after this message. World, and yet very little distracted from the, uh, the attention from the bride herself, who was resplendent in a dress that was top secret right up until the end. Let's take a look at some highlights of that wedding. Eric Burns has that for us. Prince Charles, arriving at St. Paul's Cathedral this morning to yield bachelorhood. To Lady Diana Spencer, arriving at St. Paul's just a few minutes later to take her father's arm on the long walk. I, Charles Philip Arthur George, take thee, Diana Francis, take thee, Diana Francis, to my wedded wife, to my wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, to love and to cherish, till death us do part till death us do part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. And thereto I give thee my troth. And thereto I give thee my troth. I, Diana Francis. I, Diana Francis. Take thee, Charles Philip Arthur George. Take thee, Philip Charles Arthur George. To my wedded husband. My to have and to hold, to have and to hold, from this day forward, from this day forward, for better, for worse, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, to love and to cherish, till death us do part, till death us do part. The throng outside of Buckingham Palace wants Charlotte. And it got Charlie, he and his bride appearing on a balcony shortly after the ceremony, to the delight of tens of thousands of people gathered below. For today, this is Eric Burns, NBC News, London. And for the other news of the day and the weather as well, let's go back to New York, Bob Jamison and Chris Moore.